Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today is day 23, and today we're continuing to use the dative uh, by looking at certain verbs that are used with the dative. Or actually, we could call these verbs that take the dative. And we'll use that kind of language quite a bit to talk about uh, what follows a certain verb, right? what kind of objects it uh, takes. So usually, of course, we assume that a verb, if it takes an object at all, will take a direct object in the accusative case. Uh, but certain verbs, uh, for whatever reason, will be used with other cases. Sometimes that's very unpredictable. But today, for the most part, these uses are quite predictable because they line up very nicely with English. Um, but again, in Russian, we'll often be using simply the dative case ending to do the work of an English uh, preposition like to or for. Right, so if we say things in English like I baked a cake for mom, or I bought a present for dad, or I gave a present to dad, right? The, the for and to expressions are uh, communicating an indirect object. And to do that in Russian, we simply need to put the object into the dative case to express that indirect object. Um, so uh, we're going to see a variety of verbs that do this today in Russian. Again, they're mostly self-explanatory, right? They're verbs of giving and telling and showing and things of that nature, right? Where, you know, in English we show something to someone. We tell a story to an audience. We give a present to someone, right? So all these uses of uh, to and for that in Russian are going to be dated. So if we look at a quick, uh, rather disturbing propaganda poster, right? Спасибо любимому старину за счастливое детство. Right, thanks to, or thank you to beloved Stalin for a happy childhood. By the way, любимый uh, literally means something like loved or beloved, uh, but in modern Russian it also means, uh, it can also mean favorite, right? And that's the meaning you're most likely to see usually, любимый, like more любимый film, right, would be my favorite movie and that, uh, things like that. But here it means something like beloved, right? Thanks to our beloved Stalin for a happy childhood. Okay, so there we see the dative любимому Stalinu, because we're saying thanks or giving thanks to beloved Stalin for a happy childhood. Okay, let's look at a few examples with some verbs. Надо сказать профессору спасибо за книгу. We need to say thank you to the professor for the book. Okay, so again, you see uh, uh, giving thanks to the professor. We're going to express that to um, using dative case in Russian. Now, remember that often in spoken English, we won't include the to, right? We simply use an indirect object, and uh, we understand what it means uh, just because of word order and things like that, context. I need to thank the professor for the book. So you often see that in when you're beginning with Russian, it may be useful to rephrase the English just a bit in a way that more closely mirrors the grammar in the Russian. Now, of course, you don't want to be too reliant ever on uh, translating stuff into English. You're going from English to Russian. But at least for beginners, it's very useful to compare. So again, if we rephrase this a bit, uh, we could say, I need to say thank you to the professor. And that makes perfect sense. And it shows us why we're using the dative in Russian. Okay, same thing, but with the pronoun. I said thanks to him for the book. Or simply, there we've left out the uh, a dative, which is simply thanking someone for something. Now, if we look at another poster, here's a, um, a poster talking about giving. Right? Uh, and here you see she's kind of pointing and saying, uh, it's almost like a question, what has the October Revolution given to the uh, female worker and female peasant? But here, of course, it's not a question, it's a statement. So we're, we're, sh we're sh showing here that this is what uh, the... October Revolution has given to female workers and peasants. All right, so here we have it in the singular, Rabotnitsi, right? It's given something to the female worker and Kristiankia to the female peasant. And we see here things like libraries and um, uh, clubs and uh, uh, maternity wards and things like this, right? So various uh, social institutions that are uh, geared towards helping women. Uh, we'll see a number of posters in the book that have to do with gender equality and li liberating women in the new uh, communist uh, society. Okay, so uh, anyway, the verb here is dat, which means to give. 
Yeah, I think we'll talk more about that later today. It's an irregular verb. We saw die to the perfective the other day. Uh, so just like in English, we give something to someone. It's pretty clear why that's going to take the dative in Russian. And if we survey a list of some common verbs, and we've seen these pairs already, uh, again, I think it won't be too hard to, to understand why they can all be followed by a dative. Right? Говорить, сказать. We can say something to someone. Рассказывать, рассказать. We can tell a story to someone. Покупать, купить. To buy a present or whatever for someone. Дарить, подарить. That means to give, a, to give a present, to give a gift, or give something as a gift to someone. Показывать, показать. To show. Отвечать, ответить. To answer. Um, now there's another example. Uh, we could say in English something like, I answered him uh, by email or whatever. If we rephrase that a bit, though, and say something like, to respond to, well, then that'll make a little bit more clear why this verb to answer is getting a dative in Russian, right? To respond to someone, uh, or literally to answer to someone, right? Although we'd never say that in English. Платить, заплатить, to pay, to or for. Писать, написать, to write to someone. Читать, прочитать, to read to someone. Петь, спеть, to sing a song to someone or for someone. Now, uh, to avoid a common misunderstanding, right, verbs of asking uh, don't take a dative. They take direct objects in the accusative. So you might want to just uh, note that uh, rather carefully, right? We have two verbs for asking that are often confused. The first one has to do with asking questions. So we might think of спрашивать, спросить as meaning to inquire, right, to inquire. That makes clear that it's always about asking for information, right, asking questions. Whereas prasit, paprasit is more like requesting, right? You're asking someone to do something. So uh, another way to think about that is prasit, paprasit really is never used with a question mark, right? It's not asking, it doesn't have to do anything with questioning, rather asking someone to do something. So try to learn those two pairs and note the difference carefully. So for example, Мы спросили профессора, когда у нас будет экзамен. We asked the professor. Okay, now note again, we have simply here, профессора, that's, a, that's an accusative direct object in Russian. Uh, pretty straightforward. We asked the professor when our exam would be. And again, this mirrors the English pretty well, right? Professor is the direct object of asked. Uh, now, here's the other verb for requesting. Мы попросили профессора ответить на вопрос. We asked the professor, direct object, профессора, to answer a question. And again, it mirrors the English quite well, actually. У нас нет ключа, надо ключ попросить. We don't have a key, we need to request a key, right? We need to ask for a key. Now again, note that that's not, it has nothing to do with a question, right? We're trying to get a key. Uh, so we're requesting the key. Можно попросить ключ у начальника? We can request a key with the boss or at the boss, literally. So that's kind of a peculiar idiom for, um, you know, who you're asking about something. Right? We can ask the boss. Можно попросить ключ у начальника? Okay, so uh, make sure you know those pairs fairly well. If you need to drill those, that would be great. But remember, these can all be used, except for the asking verbs. They can all be used with the dative. So let's uh, fill in a few blanks here. Uh, exercise 23a. Мы спросили blank. We asked him where he lives. Но он не ответил. But he didn't answer. And we want to use, we want to fill in a form of мы. Okay, so first, uh, what case we need in the first blank? Accusative, right? Because we're asking him, right? So the asking verb will always be accusative. Мы его спросили, где он живет? But he didn't respond to us, right? So remember, answering is one of those verbs that does take the dative. And we would say, он нам не ответил. Он нам не ответил. Okay, number two, blank, you are writing, right? So the only thing that would make sense here is, to whom are you writing, right? So what's the dative of кто? Кому? Кому пишешь? I'm writing to an old friend who lives in Russia. Okay, so again, clearly we need the dative. Пишу старому другу. 
который живет в России. Number three, mom asked her son what he was doing yesterday, and he told her everything. Okay, so the first one is an asking verb that's taking the accusative. Mama спросила сына, right, animate accusative, что он делал вчера, and he told everything to her, right, or he told her everything. Okay, so that's going to call for the dative. Dative of она is yay, right, he told everything to her, he told her everything. Number four, your sister asked me to show you a photograph of my family. Okay, so the first one, she requested that I do something. She asked me to do it. That's going to take accusative. Ваша сестра попросила меня показать, okay, to show. We show something to someone in English. And so in Russian, we're going to get the dative. It'll be вам. Right, показать вам фотографию моей семьи. Right, a photograph of my family, right? That's genitive. Uh, number five, как ты ответил? Okay, how did you answer? How did you respond to them, right? So again, dative in Russian, они will become им, right? We just need the dative form of that pronoun, они. Uh, did you write them an SMS or call them by telephone? Okay, so this verb for writing will take the dative, right? That'll be also им. Ты написал им смс или позвонил по телефону? Or did you call on using the telephone, by telephone? Number six, by the way, that по телефону, по, the preposition also takes the dative. Студент написал письмо. Okay, so the student wrote a letter, number six, and we have father, отец. Okay, we have everything but an indirect object, right? So dative would make sense here. Student napisal atsu pismo, right? He wrote to father a letter and asked him to tell mom that everything is good. Okay, so paprasil, we're making a request. That's going to take the accusative. Paprasil yuvo, we asked him to tell mom. Or maybe to say to mom, right? To tell to mom. Again, this verb of speaking is going to take a dative, right? An indirect object. Uh, right? On попросил его сказать маме, что все хорошо. Number seven. Uh, blank ты подаришь, I mean, брат на день рождения. Okay, so we're giving something to our brother for his day of birth, his birthday. Okay, so we're asking basically, what will you give to your brother for his birthday? Okay, so the first, the question word, что, is going to be the direct object accusative, so it won't change. Что ты подаришь? But брат is going to be the indirect object. We're giving something to him for his birthday. That's dative in Russian, and it'll be брату. Что ты подаришь брату на день рождения? And a follow-up question, well, what do you usually give to him? Right, so sticking with the dative, что ты ему обычно даришь? Number eight, why do you, why are you asking the new colleague, right, the new, your new co-worker, why are you asking him this question? Почему ты спрашиваешь, okay, an asking verb that's going to get a direct object in the accusative, почему ты нового коллегу спрашиваешь? Okay, take a look at that very tricky form, nova kaliagu. Let's take pick that apart, right? Kaliaga. Now remember that word can actually be male or masculine or feminine. It depends on the gender of the colleague. Right? But here we can see because of novi, right, that masculine ending is showing us that this is a male colleague. And so again, it's here it's a, actually a masculine noun with feminine endings. So everything about this is going to be masculine animate except for the endings on Kaliaga itself, which will be feminine. Okay, so what would be the masculine animate form, accusative for novi? Well, it would look like the genitive, and so we'd get novava, right? But Kaliaga is taking feminine endings, so we have the old rule, a to u, ya to you, that gives us Kaliagu. Почему ты novava Kaliagu спрашиваешь? You should ask the boss, accusative. Надо начальника спросить, right? Another um, animate masculine accusative. What did he say to you? Or what was he saying to you? Right, dative. Что он вам говорил? 
What was he saying to you? He was telling us uh, what he does in Russia. Он нам рассказывал, что он делает в России. Right? Again, so telling, telling a story or whatever. He was telling to us, Mom. Number 10, yesterday we bought a new puppy. Okay, that's a direct object. Uh, going to be accusative, animate, masculine. So it will look like genitive, nobova shinka. Мы вчера купили нового шинка. We want to show it to you. Okay, so it, or literally him, right? Because the puppy was masculine, grammatically. Мы хотим его, right? Accusative of on. And we need dative of ты, right? To show him to you. That'll be тебе. Мы хотим его тебе показать. Okay, number 11. Mom uh, read a Russian fairy tale, right? Mama прочитала, mama прочитала русскую сказку. Okay, so we have a subject, we have a direct object, but we need an indirect object, right? That's the only thing missing. So дочка is going to go into the dative, and that'll be дочке. Mama прочитала дочке русскую сказку. And then she's saying a song to her, right? So the her, она, that's going to be dative. Потом спела Yay. Now accusative piesnia atu atu yatu piesnu. Patom spiela ye piesnu. Number twelve, I asked my female friend to tell you the whole truth. Okay, so we're telling the whole truth, that's our direct object, and Padruga is the indirect object. We're telling the truth to her, so that'll be dative. Uh, sorry, uh no, sorry, I, I misread the sentence. We're asking her to tell me the whole truth. Sorry. Okay, so asking, we're going to ask the female friend. That'll be accusative, of course. Я попросил подругу сказать, right, to tell me, to tell to me, dative, сказать мне всю правду, right, that's the direct object. Ату, у, я, ту, ю. Okay, let's... Um, Compose a few sentences with asking and be being very careful to choose correctly between these two verbs, right? Remember, спрашивать, спросить is to inquire. Okay, it has to do with question marks. Просить, попросить has to do with requesting, right? Including asking other people to do things, right? So, uh, has nothing to do with question marks. Okay, number one, mom asked when I would, when I will be home. Literally, when I will, she asked when I will be home. Remember, we're preserving the original, the tense of the original question when we use it in, in, as a reported question as we do here. Okay, so mom asked. Okay, this is a question. Sounds like a one-time question. We'll, we'll use perfective. Mama spresila. Mama spresila, comma. Okay, and what did she literally ask? When, when will I be home? When will you be home? She asked. Okay, so now as a reported question, we're saying she asked, when I will be home. Когда я буду дома? Когда я буду дома? And again, there we're preserving the tense of the original question, unlike in English, where we had this sequence of tenses thing, right? And because the main verb asked is past tense, we change the tense of the question, and so on and so forth. Okay, number two, she would always ask what I had been doing. Okay, she would always ask, that's repetition in the past, right? So, and she's asking what I had been doing. Well, that's, um, that's a question, right? So we're going to use спрашивать, imperfective. Она всегда спрашивала, comma, what I had been doing. Okay, had been is a per past perfect in English. Um, now, remember that in Russian, we only have one option for that. That would be just simple past tense, right? We don't have any other crazy tenses in Russian. What I had been doing, she's asking about ongoing action, so we're going to use делать. Она всегда спрашивала, что я делал, что я делал, what I had been doing. Uh, okay, number three, she, always, she asked me to always take an umbrella. Okay, now we have a request, right? This no longer is a question, it's really more of a command, right? A request that I always take an umbrella. So, um, 
let's pretend this is a one-time request. She asked me to take an, always take an umbrella. So let's use попросить. Она попросила меня. Or она меня попросила. Right, she asked me to always take an umbrella. Okay, this is repetition, so we're going to need an imperfective verb meaning to take. That would be брать. Right, всегда брать зонт. Она меня попросила всегда брать зонт. She'd always, regularly, habitually take an umbrella. Okay, number four, I can ask my brother for an umbrella. Okay, another way to rephrase this, I can request an umbrella from my brother. Right? Now, we could say I could ask my brother to give me an umbrella, right, and include a verb, but here we're doing something a little bit different. We're requesting an umbrella, and then we get that idiom, ooh, that idiomatic, I can request an umbrella at my brother, that type of idiom. Я могу попросить зонт у брата. Я могу попросить зонт у брата. Okay, so speaking of the verb to give, um, I think we touched on this yesterday, and we, we learned that dot, the, uh, the perfective form, is irregular. We looked at that yesterday. And, uh, but the pair is davat dot. So that first, the imperfective form davat belongs to a new verb type we're learning today. We're going to call them avi verbs. Avi verbs. Okay, this verb type um, is not really that hard. But it seems that it's the one verb type that students almost never learn. And so, again, I would urge you really to, if you, if you want to learn Russian, right, you're going to need to learn your avi verbs. And you might want to circle this and just drill it into your head, right? It, just practice it, repeat it over and over until you establish the pattern. And then, again, every time you come to a new avi verb, well, think for a moment, okay, avi. That works like davat, right? So davat, to give and perfective, that's our new head verb for this new type. It's conjugated like dayu, dayosh, dayot, dayom, dayotye, dayut. Okay, so there's the pattern. We've gone from davat to dayu, dayosh, dayot, etc. We can see that avi verbs take the your endings, and the avi in the um, conjugated forms collapses to an a, right? There's no vi anywhere in there anymore in the conjugated forms. Okay, so we can compare compare that to a type we've already seen, ova verbs, right? Like protestavat, um, right? An ova verb, but in the conjugated forms, the ova collapses to an u, right? And that's sort of what, that's the trick to conjugating ova verbs, right? Pretty simple one, really. Ova collapses to u. And we get forms like protestuju, protestujish, protestujit, and so forth. Well, for avi, we have the same kind of thing happening. The avi suffix is collapsing to simply an a. And then to that, we add u, yosh, yot, and so forth, right? The your endings. Now, uh, the good news is that the, these avi verbs are a fairly restricted uh, class of verbs because, they're, in, in essence, there are only three of them in the entire language, right? There's davat, which means to give. There's stavat, which has to do with standing, and finally there's znavat, which happens to do with knowing. The only trick is that those final two, the, the final two of those three verbs only occur in prefixed form. Right, so let's think about this carefully. Davat is an actual verb. We're going to we'll just use it, actually. We'll be practicing it more today. So davat means to give and perfected. That's an actual verb, and it's an avi verb. Okay, the second one we listed is stavat, stavat, but that is not a verb all by itself. We have to add a prefix to that to get an, any actual Russian verb. For example, if we add v, we get a verb meaning, uh, we get the verb stavat, which means to get up, to get out of bed, for example, uh, or to arise, right? Okay, so we'd say that stavat is indeed an avi verb. Um, but this, uh, we could add other prefixes to, to this verb to get new verbs uh, that all have the basic form stavat. Right? So let's just think of stavat as a form we can add prefixes to, and it'll always work the same way. It'll always be an avi verb. Similarly, there is no Russian verb znavat, right, with, the, with this form znavat all by itself. We would have to add some prefix to it to get an actual Russian verb. For example, uznavat 
means to learn information, to find something out. And by the way, you can see that this verb is related to znać, which means to know. Right? We've seen that verb already. Okay, so essentially, uh, these three forms, davać, to give, stavać, which is a non-existing little, non-existent uh, little verb, kind of, kind of base infinitive, and znavać, also a base infinitive, right? Those final two, we can add all sorts of prefixes to it to get new verbs. Uh, but essentially, we can think of those three verbs as being the only three avai verbs in the, in the language, right? But again, when we, once we start adding prefixes, as we will we'll do a lot of in book three, we'll get all sorts of new verbs built off these three basic forms, right? So, again, I'm saying too much about this maybe, but although there are only three of these verbs in essence, once we start adding prefixes, we'll get dozens of them, right? So that makes this a very important uh, verb type. Okay, if we look over the tables here, we'll see three, four examples of um, avai verbs. Davoites, right, which is a verb all by itself, doesn't need a prefix at all. Dayu, dayosh, dayot, dayom, dayotye, dayut. Note the imperative davai. We'll say more about that later uh, in a later lesson. Okay, now let's add a prefix to that verb, pro which literally means through, but in this case, if we add uh, pro, we get a new verb meaning to sell, right? Uh, now again, look what's happened. We've added a prefix, but the, the basic underlying verb is davait, and so this new prefix verb pradavait is still an avai verb. It's going to work exactly like davait. Pradayu, pradayosh, pradayot, pradayom, pradayotye, pradayut. And the imperative pradavai. Okay, let's take a verb with the standing uh, word, right? Stavait, which again will only work by adding prefixes. For example, v, we get this new verb stavait, meaning to get up, to rise, to get out of bed, and so forth. Stayu, stayosh, stayot, stayom, stayotye, stayut, and the imperative stavai. Uznavait means to find out information, right? To learn information. Uznavait gives uznayu, uznayosh, uznayot, uznayom, uznayotye, uznayut. And the imperative uzna, uznavai. Okay, now we need to, we've learned these four new avai verbs. Now let's look at their complete pair, right? We need to know the pair, of course, to really use these verbs. The verb, the pair for giving is davait, dat. Okay, now, so davait is an avai verb, but the perfective is irregular. Remember that from, I think, yesterday? Dam, dash, dast, dadim, daditye, dadut. Okay, the pair for selling, pradavait, pradait. Now, look there. Again, we've added prefixes to both forms, but we're still, in terms of conjugating this verb, we're still dealing with davait, dait. Okay, next one to get up, stavait, stait. First verb is avai, the, and then the perfective is stait, is an in verb. Stanu, stanish, stanit, stanim, stanitye, stanut. Okay, so that's one of those non-suffixed verbs, kind of like žit. Right? If we think back to žit, to live, the final consonant was a v, but in this case, it's n. Right? So all we need to do is supply the n, and then add the your endings. This verb happens to be stenstressed, right? So it's stanu, stanish, stanyut, and so forth. Okay, finally, to find out, uznavait, uznait. That can mean to find out or recognize, right? Uh, so look at uznait, that's easy, that's an I verb, just like znait. Now one final verb, uh, another prefixed form of zadavait, uh, sorry, a prefixed form of davait to give is zadavait, zadait. And that's the verb we use to ask a question, or we might think pose a question in Russian. Okay, why is this kind of important? It's, a, it's an extremely common mistake to say, uh, right, so a student will want to say something like, he asked me a question, and they'll, again, kind of relying on the English, they'll say, okay, so you can never say that in Russian, uh, can't take 
question as a direct object. Of course, you could say, on spracil mnya, that would mean he asked me, whatever. But we can't say spracit vapros. The Russian idiom for that is zadavat vapros, which is more of this idea of giving, kind of dishing out, serving up, or posing a question. Right, so zadavat, zadat, vapros. Speaking of giving, here's a, another propaganda poster promoting gender equality. Daloy kuchna rabstva, down with kitchen slavery or kitchen servitude. Daloy just means down, it's sort of like down with, right? Downward. Down with uh, kitchen servitude. Dayosh novi bleet. Literally, you give a new bleet, which means daily life, kind of the daily drag, the daily way of of life, right? Uh, so the idea here was, if you look in the uh, window there, you see a stalovaya. You can barely read that. Stalovaya is a cafeteria, uh, specifically a Soviet-style cafeteria, where people could get, you know, inexpensive meals that were hopefully of reasonably good quality. Uh, and the idea was that that would liberate women, uh, housewives and, and women generally, from the expectation of cooking dinner all the time. Right, so uh, that's the point of this poster, and it's one of several we, we'll see again that deal with uh, liberating women in the in, in new Soviet society. Let's look over three verbs for uh, that involve giving. They're all built off this davat dat pair, which is a really tricky one. Again, you really want to drill this because it's su such a common verb, and uh, both forms the imperfective davai is this somewhat tricky new type we've learned today avai. And then the perfective dot is completely irregular, so we just have to memorize these new patterns here. And also, the part of the trick here is that remembering that davat is the imperfective verb, right? So, dayu, for example, means I give, I am giving. Uh, dam, meanwhile, that's, that's the conjugated form of dot. So, since it's perfective, it's future tense in meaning. So, for example, dam means I will give, dash, you will give, dust, he, she, it will give, and so forth. Right, look at the past tense also. Uh, now remember, no matter how odd a word may be in its conjugated forms, the past tense is usually going to be predictable, right, coming straight from the infinitive. So we get daval, davala, and so forth, right, we keep the, the, that dava in the past tense, nothing collapses. Uh, similarly, in dots, right, it's an irregular verb, but the past tense is pretty regular, except for that feminine stress pattern, right? So dal, dala, dala, dali. Uh, now, if we add prefixes to, to that pair, we're going to get a new new verbs, right, with new meanings, but the conjugation pattern is going to remain the same. So let's go over this just to be crystal clear about it. Prodavais, to sell imperfective. Prodayu, prodayosh, prodayot, prodayom, prodayotye, prodayut. So that's, again, those would be present tense. I am selling, you are selling, he, she, it is selling. But pradat, those are going to be perfective. So if we conjugate these forms, they're going to be future tense in meaning. Pradam, I will sell. Pradash, you will sell. Pradast, he or she will sell, and so forth. Pradadim, pradaditye, pradadut. Finally, this verb proposing a question, zadayu, zadayosh, zadayot, right? I am posing, you are posing, etc. But the conjugated perfective verbs are future tense in meaning, zadam, zadash, zadast. I will pose, you will pose, he or she will pose, and so forth. Okay, I was trying to uh, fill in a few blanks here. Djedushka i babushka dali, okay, favorite grandson and candy. A confieta is a piece of candy. Okay, so hope, presumably we're giving the candy to the favorite grandchild. So, Lubimui vnuk needs to appear in the dative. Masculine, that'll be Lubimamu vnuku. And confieta, accusative, ata u, yata u, confietu. Dedushka i babushka dali Lubimamu vnuku confietu. Number two. Our father sold, and then we have an old car and a neighbor. Okay, so presumably the old car is the direct object, neighbor is the indirect object. So, Nashatiets prodol staru mashinu, accusative, 
Now to the neighbor, dative, saciado. Number three, uh, the female student posed an interesting question, and then we have professor. Okay, so professor, the only thing that would make sense is to have that in the dative. She posed an interesting question to the professor. Studentka, the, start, sorry. Studentka zadala interesny vapros profesoru. Here's a nice uh, paslovitsa. Žiaizn dajot aidin polko borg, aht nimai vsiake gaidima. God alone gives life, right? Or look at the word order. Life gives only God, only God alone. Right here, aidin, aidin means one, but it can also mean alone, right? If you're one, it's one way of thinking about being all by yourself, right? So God alone gives life. Avsiaka gaidima aht nimai, all kinds of vermin, all kinds of filth. Take it away. Okay, sad but true. Okay, let's go to uh, the next page. You get a few, a couple of other aspectual pairs. Uh, helping and believing. Okay, so this brings us to another topic I don't think we've addressed yet. Uh, that, uh, well, maybe here and there. Um, we, uh, we've seen today that quite often with the dative case, the verbs that are used with the dative are fairly predictable because they line up with English, right? So that, that's true of most of the verbs we've seen so far, including giving, right? To give something to someone, right? That's very obvious. Uh, but other verbs, and this is somewhat more unusual, but certain verbs, we say that they simply take a given case really for no apparent reason, right? Maybe the most obvious example in Russian is our first verb here, pomagait pomoch. Okay, that's our new pair meaning to help. Uh, okay, so we'll look at the conjugation in a moment, but pomagait uh, pomoch, why would that take the dative? Well, th in this case, you can kind of imagine why that might be the case. Uh, you know, if we even just paraphrase it a bit, right, instead of to help, we could say to give help to, right? And already it's a bit clear why this verb is going to take the dative, because there's always this idea of aiding, you know, giving some, some benefit to whoever the person is you're helping. Right, uh, but be that as it may, we, we should simply memorize uh, that pomagait pomoch is followed by the dative. Usually, of course, it would be a person in the dative, right, to help someone. Okay, so look at the table again and take very careful note of how we're marking that. We, we first give the pair pomagait pomoch, and then, as we may have mentioned, we're, we're following that, in this case, with a kamu. Okay, what on earth is that telling us? Well, we know that's the dative form of ktu. Right, so that's showing us, most importantly, that this verb is followed by objects in the dative. Uh, and the fact that we've chosen kto here is showing us that usually, of course, that would be a person, right? It wouldn't be a shto, a thing. It would be a kto, right? Although in some cases, you know, it depends on the verb that you could imagine a, a kto or a shto as the object. So watch out for that. But again, the most important thing here is that kamu is showing us that this verb simply takes the dative, so to speak. Now we see that it can also be followed by an infinitive, right? Add a kamu plus an infinitive in the sense of you're helping someone to do something, right? So sort of like the English, uh, that's the construction for talking about helping people to do something. Okay, look over the conjugation there. Pomagait, that's an easy uh, derived imperfective. It's an I verb, so very easy to conjugate. Pomagayu, pomagayish, pomagayat, pomagayan, pomagayish, pomagayut. Now, pomoch, watch out for that one. We, you may notice that we actually know this verb already. It's just like moch, right? We learned moch, which means to be able to do something. It's a g, obstruent, which is quite tricky. Magu, mojish, mojit, etc. Now, look what happens here. We've all that we've done is add a po. So we've added a prefix to get a new verb with a new meaning. But essentially, we're still working with moch, right? So this verb, this new verb, the perfective pomoch, is no more mysterious than moch, right? That first verb we learned. So the forms are pomagu, pomozhish, pomozhit, pomozhin, pomozhitye, pomogut. Look at the past tense as well. We know that moch is quite unpredictable in the past tense. We got mok, magla, maglo, magli. Same pattern here, pomok. Pomagla, pomaglo, pomagli. 
Okay, another verb that takes the uh, dative is vierich, to believe. Vierich pa vierich is the pair. Again, we see here in the little entry that kamu uh, is showing us that this verb is also followed by a dative, which again may not be um, very intuitive for English speakers. Again, it might help to rephrase that a bit and say to, to give credence to. Or that might just be a way, again, at this stage, if you're still somewhat relying on English or working back and forth, uh, that might be a way to think of this verb in a way that makes clear uh, that it's followed by the dative. Okay, these are just e-verbs, right? Stem-stressed e-verbs, so they're quite easy. Vieru, vierish, vierit, vierin, vierice, vierit. All right, let's look at some examples. Я всегда помогаю соседу, а он мне всегда помогает. Okay, so two datums, right? I help the neighbor, he helps me. You see the bold forms there are dative objects of this verb to help. Вчера моя жена помогла сыну сделать задание. Yesterday my wife helped my son, right? So there the bold, right, сыну, that's in the dative, as the object of помогла. And you see there we followed that up again with an infinitive. Она помогла сыну сделать. We could say she helped our son to do an assignment. She helped him do an assignment. Я помогу тебе приготовить ужин. I will help you to prepare dinner. Again, we've got a dative plus an, an infinitive. And finally, правда, я тебе не верю. Really, I don't believe you. Okay, so верить, again, we just have to remember that verb takes the dative in Russian. Я тебе не поверю. Не верю, не верю. Okay, let's uh, fill in a few um, uh, indirect objects here to ask some questions. And these are sort of construction, uh, discussion questions, so you could practice answering them. But let's for now just uh, ask them. Ты часто помогаешь blank решать задачу по физике? Do you often help someone solve a problem in physics, a physics problem? Okay, what would be the datives? Now, here we have a masculine and a feminine version. So, a male neighbor would be sasiadu, feminine, sasiatkia. Okay, number two, do you often help your male or female friend to chitait truni ruski text, to read a difficult Russian text? Okay, those dative forms would be drugu and padrugie. Do you help mom and dad myć pasudu? Do, do you help mom and dad to wash the dishes? Do you help them wash the dishes? Okay, these are both uh, feminine endings. Mamie, papie. Number four, do you help your brother or sister uh, shop for new clothes? Okay, dates would be bratu and sistrie. Ty často pomagaš bratu ili sistrie pokupać novoju odježdu. Okay, another variation, will you not help? Now again, note the perfective. This is a asking about a one-time future incident, right? Will you not help your child to solve a problem in mathematics? Okay, that, or the kid, I, it sounds a little bit fancy for a little kid, but maybe it's an arithmetic problem. Won't you help the kid solve his math problem? Ne pomožeš ribionku, right, mobile vowel. Now look here, because we're talking about a single incident, we're shifting to perfective, and that includes the, uh, the infinitive, right? Will you not help the child to completely solve his problem in math? Okay, here we have these adjectival forms, nakomi and znakomaya, so a male and a female acquaintance. Will you help them to write a letter to their boyfriend or girlfriend? Okay, so we need to keep uh, adjectival endings. Znakomomu, znakomoi. Right, omu and oi we're adding there. Number seven, will you help the professor to draw a map of Russia? Okay, dative of profesor will be profesoru. Ne pomožeš profesoru narisovat kartu Rusije? Number eight, will you help grandma or granddad to buy a new computer? Ne pomožeš babuškje ili djeduškje kupit novi computer? Okay, let's take these verbs and just make some simple sentences ourselves. 
uh, let's say she helped me yesterday. Okay, let's always be thinking about tense and aspect, right? This is clearly past tense. Now, it also sounds like a rather specific context, right? We have yesterday here, so it's a safe bet to go with the um, perfective, right? By the way, we also have a simple past uh, tense in the English, right? She helped me as opposed to she was helping me, right? So a lot of different clues here uh, guide us towards choosing the perfective. Ana, pamagla, right? There's our verb, pamagla. We need the dative of me because it's the object of helping. Mnie včera. Ana mnie pomagla včera. He always helped him. Okay, this is going to be imperfective past because it always kept happening, always, repetition. Mui vsegda pomagali. Mui vsegda pomagali. And we need him in the dative. So that'll be jumu. Mui jumu vsegda pomagali. Now let's see number three. He'll always help you. Okay, this is future tense, imperfective, because we have always, right? We have the repetition, so we need that compound future with pomagat. On sigda budget pomagat. He'll always help. Now we need to throw in a dative of tui, which is tibia. On sigda budget tibia. Sorry, tibia pomagat. On sigda budget tibia pomagat. Number four, I'll help you tomorrow. Okay, again, this sounds like a one-time thing, so we'll uh, we'll guess perfective here, absent any further context. Okay, to get future perfective, we simply conjugate pamoch. Ya vam pamagu, right? Ya vam, dative, vam, pamagu, zafra. I masculine help them. Okay, this would be past tense, so we have to watch the tricky, again, it sounds like per, uh, perfect, a perfect aspect situation, right? Simple past, I helped them, as opposed to I was helping them or something like that. Ya im pamok. Ya pamok, right? I helped and then them in the dative im. Okay, again, if this were a feminine speaker, she'd say, ya pamagla im. Ya im pamagla. Look at a quick poster, sinu parsi slava. This is pointing out something that's on the one hand, rather obvious, but it somehow sometimes uh, bothers students, right? Look at the first word there, sinu. Okay, what case is that in? Well, we see the ending, u. Okay, so we ask again, what case is it in? Well, we don't really know unless uh, we know the starting word for this, this noun, right? U is an ending. Uh, and our dilemma here is, is that the dative, is that a masculine dative? In which case the nominative form would be sin, or is it a feminine accusative, right? In which case the nominative would be sinna, right? So this is a, a, an example of an ambiguous ending, right? An ending u that is ambiguous in the sense that it could be the dative ending of a masculine noun or the accusative ending of a feminine noun. Okay, the only way to really know which which it is is to know that sin is a masculine noun, right? Sun, right? We just simply have to know our starting form sin, and that allows us to make sense of all the other case forms we'll see for that word, right? In this case, sinu, that's dative. So, to the son of the party, parti, that's genitive, genitive of partia, slava. Glory to the son of the party, namely Yuri Gagarin, first person in the in outer space, was the son, so to speak, of the Communist Party. Okay, two more pairs, meaning to advise. They both mean both mean basically the same thing, or to advise or recommend. Uh, you see that the second one, recommend alvaj, is a borrowed verb. Okay, and note how it's an ova, ova verb, right? That's to be expected for almost any borrowed uh, verb in Russian. Rekomendavat, rekomendavat. Okay, and then we have a, a, a good old Russian version, a synonym, meaning the same thing pretty much. Savietovich pasavietovic. It means to give advice. Saviet means advice or counsel. Um, and so savietovich pasavietovic means to uh, take to uh, give advice. Okay, these both uh, can be followed by the dative, right? They can be followed by a couple of different things. Uh, for example, you can recommend a wine, 
Okay, what case do you think that would be in? That would be accusative because it's the, it's what we're recommending. What wine do you recommend? Right, I recommend French wine. But if we're recommending something to someone or for someone or whatever, then as we might guess, that will call for a dative. I recommend to you French wine. I recommend French wine to you or for you. Again, in this with these examples, it's pretty clear why we're getting the dative. We can also follow with an infinitive. I advise to you to drink only French wine. Okay, here are a few uh, questions about what you might recommend to people. Let's just ask these and you can practice answering. Uh, what movie do you recommend for your friend or female friend? What movie does he or she recommend to you, for you? What book do you recommend that he read or yay that she read? Do you have a favorite book? Какая? Right, какая она? What is your favorite book? Какой язык ты советуешь изучать? What language do you recommend that someone study? Right, or maybe we could say literally, what language do you recommend to study? Русский? Или ты думаешь, что он слишком трудный? Right, do you recommend Russian? Or do you think that it, masculine, remember, on, that it is too difficult? Какой сериал ты нам советуешь смотреть по телевизору? What series do you recommend for us to watch on television? Этот сериал смотрит в России. Do they, wa do they watch this series in Russia? Number five. Ты не можешь нам посоветовать музыкальную группу? Right? Could you recommend, or can, here we're negating it to be a bit more polite. Uh, can you not recommend to us a musical group? That is a band. Do they know this group in Russia, right? Are they popular in Russia? Which writer do you recommend to us to read, right? Uh, look at Kakova Pisatilia. That's an animate accusative. And then we have nam in the dative. Who's your favorite Russian writer? Okay, the last verb today we're going to use with the dative is, again, one that is not necessarily intuitive. It's uh, zvanit, which means literally to ring, but uh, it usually nowadays means to call someone on the phone. So um, you see again in the table, uh, it's followed by kamu. So that's our shorthand. We're going to continue using that throughout this uh, textbook series, right? Again, kamu is showing us that we, use, we follow up this verb, or we can follow it, with a a somebody that's appearing in the dative, kamu, right? Uh, Zvanit is an instressed um, e verb, so the forms are going to be zvanil, zvanish, zvanit, zvanim, zvaniti, zvaniat. Uh, by the way, sometimes in Russian you do have competing stress patterns. Uh, like in any language, you have certain spoken variations and uh, one form may not be universally accepted, or there may be a situation where it's the, the sort of the correct literary formal uh, form of the given word, and then you may have spoken variations. Uh, anyway, I say all that just to point out that you will hear some Russians say, uh, treat zvonit as a shift in stress verb. So you would hear zvonil, zvonish, zvonik. Uh, but you should take care with that because a lot of Russians think that that's not correct, of course. And by the way, if you look it up in the dictionary, hopefully you will see zvanil, zvanish, zvanit, right? So that's what we're going with in the textbook. Uh, by the way, another little tip uh, is that if to, to take advice from native speakers with a grain of salt in the sense that a given speaker may have their own opinions about what is correct and what isn't, right? Just, I mean, language always works like that. So it'll sometimes happen that uh, you'll say something that maybe you learned in a textbook and whatever Russian you happen to be talking with will say, oh, no, people don't say that. It's, uh, it's something else. Like in this case, it may be 
you know, uh, it should be zvornik or something, right? Well, then you look at the dictionary, and at the very least, you see that there are two possibilities, right? And then it may possibly be that the possibility you heard is just basically wrong, at least from the point of view of formal grammar or what have you. Okay, so, you know, one way to think about that is think how many grammatical mistakes native speakers of English make, right? Um, and again, there's a separate question, is it really a mistake, or is it just a spoken variant, right? So there's always that issue. It's hard to just judge language usage, right? But again, there is always this concern, what should we say in the formal language, and maybe what can we say, or what might we hear when people are speaking just the natural uh, colloquial variant. And by the way, language is always changing, of course. So that's another component of this issue, right? Uh, historical change of languages. So anyway, but in our textbook, we're going to go with in stress, zwanyu, zwanyush, zwanyi, etc. Okay, here's some uh, qu more questions. Do you zwanyish mamie, papie ili mamie? Do you often call mom or dad, or dad or mom? Okay, now look, again, we're following zwanyish with the dative. So we have papie, mamie, dative objects of this verb for calling. Ani zwanya tibie kajde dien. Follow-up question. Do they call you every day? Okay, dative tibia. A što sprašivat kada zvonjat? What do they ask when they call? Number two. Kamu, another follow-up question. A kamu ti pozvonil včera? So again, dative. To whom did you make a phone call yesterday, right? Whom did you call yesterday? A kto tibia zvonil? Who called you? Drug ili pa druga? A friend or a, a male friend or a female friend? Mama ili papa, mom or dad. Uh, number three, a kamu ti pozvonish zavtra? Whom will you call tomorrow? Kto ti bie navierna pozvonit? Who will call you, probably? Right, who's likely to call you? Ti bie dative. Drug ili padruga, mama ili papa. Right, a male friend or a female friend, mom or dad, and so forth. Let's look at one last propaganda poster and close out today's lesson with this. Lenin Veliki Nam Puch Azaril. That is from the uh, Soviet anthem, which we'll learn later in book three. Once we know more grammar, we'll learn to sing the Soviet anthem, which, by the way, you hear at the end of every lesson, if you haven't noticed. Right? Okay, so let's look at this. Lenin Veliki. Veliki is just an adjective meaning great. So, great Lenin. Lenin the great, or the uh, great leader Lenin. Lenin Veliki. Okay, our verb is azaril, which means illuminated. Right? We don't know that verb yet, of course, but we can see that it's past tense. He illuminated. What did he illuminate? Puj. Puj is another verb. We have noun we haven't seen. It means past. Okay, so uh, we can understand the grammar here at least. Lenin, great Lenin, illuminated path. Okay, then we see in the middle the dated form of mui, which is nam, nam. Okay, so how can we understand this use of the dative? Well, it may be that we can translate it quite literally and still things will make perfect sense. Lenin illuminated the path for us, or to us, or for us, or whatever. Okay, that makes pretty good sense, but quite often uh, you'll see the dative used quite simply where English would use a possessive form, right? So if we try, let's try translating nam as though it were some kind of genitive expression, right? Some kind of possessive expression. We get Lenin illuminated our path, which sounds really great, you know, very naturally uh, in English. Okay, and we'll see this very often. This is something that we'll, we're just noting here, but we'll keep seeing it over and over and over, especially when we get into our literature uh, later in book two and then book, book three and four. We'll see that uh, Russian often prefers a dative expression in favor of a genitive expression. Uh, sorry, a possessive expression, which could be genitive or it could be a possessive adjective like moi or nash. Right, so what if we were to use the form nash here? Could we do that? Lenin Biliki Azaril Nash Puj. Right, of course we could say that. There's nothing wrong with that grammatically. But again, um, quite often you'll see that the preference is toward the dative. Right? So that could be a dative pronoun or noun, uh, right, in place of some genitive form or some possessive adjective. Okay, so we'll uh, 
file that away, right, and we'll return to it. We'll see so many examples later that you'll get used to it. But for now, we're just kind of pointing that out. Uh, and you know, the basic, basically you could boil that down to a little rule of thumb, right? If you see a dative form of a noun or a pronoun, and you try to translate it kind of literally using two or four, and it just doesn't work, it either doesn't make sense at all or it sounds very awkward, try translating it as a possessive expression and see if that, see if that works. Often you'll find that it sounds really great. Okay, anyway, that's enough for today. Dazafra, uh, until tomorrow, and until then, Das Vidani Tavarishi. Thank you.